Hi, Lieutenant Colonel Perez here. Welcome back to uh, Arguing the OE. This is episode 11, and uh, this is going to be a very short episode where I'm going to address the question, should we use DIME, uh, DIME, that framework of uh, diplomatic uh, information, uh, military and economic uh, means to label our lines of operation in, a, in an operational approach according to the Joint Doctrine. So uh, let's review uh, pretty much uh, what doctor says, uh, Joint Doctrine says about uh, uh, the operational approach. One of the ways uh, we can organize our operations is by uh, lines of, uh, of operation. And lines of operation would be geographic in nature. So suppose we're going to attack from a, from a west to east, and at first we're going to hit, uh, uh, try to uh, uh, secure this city. Then we're going to move to this city. Then we're going to, an, to an, uh, consecutive cities in order to get, say, to, uh, to a capital. Right? And we might, doing these, might be doing these operations uh, on several different fronts. So here, uh, conceivably, we could be in this uh, uh, Joa, and we have a series of operations uh, that are leading uh, towards this capital, and another one, another series of uh, operations that are leading to this capital. And for these operations, we're occupying different cities on the way to the capital. Well, here we use lines of operation. But the joint doctrine also says that we can use uh, lines of effort. And uh, with lines of effort, they're conceptual in nature. So the, uh, one of the common ones we've seen uh, in both Iraq and Afghanistan at different levels is we'll have a, a, a line of effort entitled governance. Another one, something like economic uh, development. And another one, uh, security operations. These are conceptual in nature, and each of these has uh, certain objectives or at uh, the more tactical level of tasks. Okay. So you can see the difference between uh, different cities or different geographic regions as we move and conceptual containers like governance, economic development, security operations. Each of these, uh, by the way, can have, uh, can share some of the same objectives. So um, uh, security operations would obviously be important for uh, uh, conducting raids, for instance but it would also be important for securing uh, projects. And it would also be important for securing, uh, say, uh, uh, significant uh, key leader engagements that occur. Okay? So the same objective can be on more than one line of uh, uh, effort. Now the question uh, becomes, is it good to use DIME to label uh, these lines of effort? And frequently, frequently in, uh, in, in uh, Lewis and Clark, what we'll see is we'll have four uh, lines of effort. And these will be diplomatic, these will be informational, uh, these will be military, and these will be uh, uh, economic uh, oriented. Yeah. Not a good idea. First of all, a doctrine, a JP50, uh, explicitly states that we ought not to do this. And I think the reason is sufficiently, sufficiently important uh, that we ought to reiterate it here. Uh, moreover, it's very common to see this. Why don't we want to do this? Well, our entire approach uh, for the past uh, several years has been to em emphasize certain things. Interagency, right? all of government, or unified action. You also see comprehensive. You also see civil military. You even have some people uh, talking about the whole of society. which includes uh, civil society organizations uh, within an area, uh, NGOs for instance. This has been our push, unified action. When we use DIME, the DIME framework to label our dues, what we essentially do is create silos between each of these. So we'll stay, say something like state and USAID are here, state and USAID, uh, and the administration are here. We'll say that the military uh, focuses on this one and economic development, say uh, USAID and other, and other members of the international community. What we want to do instead is create lines of effort when we choose to use lines of effort when they're appropriate, not lines of operation. We want to create lines of effort that are labeled in such a way that they uh, encourage or facilitate uh, unified action. So. Let's say we're looking at, uh, at a region of the world 
where uh, we have uh, operations going, say training with uh, with uh, military to military training, but we have intelligence sharing. We uh, conduct uh, counter drug operations, and maybe there's earthquakes or flooding and and, uh, and disease that that uh, occasionally erupts in this region, and uh, and the force conducts humanitarian operations. So one thing we could do in this region is label uh, one uh, line of uh, effort, say counter drug operations. Another one you might love la uh, label uh, humanitarian assistance. Another one uh, we might love a uh, label intelligence sharing. And another one uh, partnered uh, training. Now these lines of effort facilitate ways of combining the various means that we have here. These are means. These are strategic means, according to the doctrine. What we want to do is figure out ways of combining them in different ways so that we have whole of government, government approaches, unified action appro uh, uh, approaches, interagency approaches. Counter drug operations is an interagency operation. You have several different governmental agencies cooperating together. The same with humanitarian assistance. The same with intelligence sharing, and if we do it right, it's the same thing with partner training, if we're trying to teach this interagency ethos to other countries. So what we want to do is stay away from the dime, which silos the different means, right, and adopt uh, lines of effort that integrate the different means in broad ways to accomplish uh, end states. Uh, thanks a lot.